Hi, it's Katrina. From surprises in empty coffins to extinct animals we never knew about, here are nine of the most bizarre and mysterious archaeological discoveries from Egypt. Number 9. Head Cone Mystery Strange cone-shaped hats are a common feature of ancient Egyptian artwork of all types, showing their use in rituals, feasts, and even childbirth. The hat's repeated appearances span a lengthy period, indicating that they were used for over 1,000 years. Yet archaeologists had never unearthed one, and they also could not figure out what the exact purpose of the hats was, leading researchers to speculate that the headwear was purely symbolic in nature not necessarily something that the ancient Egyptians actually used or wore. Perhaps scholars theorized the hats were similar to halos. Less than two years ago, however, archaeologists revealed that they had found the first physical evidence of the bizarre head cones. A study describes how the researchers discovered the objects in 2009 in Armana, an ancient city dating back to the 14th century BC, which once housed around 30,000 people, but was only significant for around 15 years. The hats were found in two modest burials belonging to ordinary people. While these graves generally do not contain valuable items, the hats were of immense value to researchers. Upon further examination, they found that the artifacts were not solid pieces of perfumed fat, as previously theorized, but that the caps are hollowed shells formed around a black or brown material that might be cloth. But the mystery isn't completely solved. While there are signs that the headpieces may have had something to do with fertility, it's difficult for the team to assess their meaning since they were discovered in non-elite burials. But artwork generally shows high-ranking members of society wearing them. One thing is clear, according to archaeologist Nicola Harrington, who told National Geographic that, essentially, the cones are worn in the presence of the divine. She theorizes that those who wore the hats may have been dancers, as both skeletons bear evidence of spinal fractures and one shows signs of a degenerative joint disease, ailments that are reportedly common among professional dancers. But her suspicion is nothing more than a guess, and until or unless more archaeological evidence comes along, experts may never know what the head cones were used for. Number 8. Empty Coffin Surprise an Egyptian sarcophagus discovered in 1860 was mistakenly classified as empty and sat untouched at a university museum in Sydney, Australia for over 150 years. It is 2,500 years old, and recently scientists decided to take another look. In 2018, scientists opened the lid for the first time and discovered the tattered remains of a mummy inside. They were very excited about what secrets this mummy might reveal about the ancient world. An excavation and CT scan revealed the presence of bones, bandages, resin fragments, and over 7,000 beads from a funeral shawl. Based on hieroglyphs found in the sarcophagus, the mummy was that of an ancient high priestess named Merenith Eight S, who lived and died around 600 BC. She worked in the temple of the lion-headed goddess Sekhmet and was at least 30 years old when she died. Even though the coffin hadn't been touched until just now, before it made it to the museum, sometime in the past, her tomb had been ransacked by looters and raiders, and her remains had been torn apart. Just 10% of the mummy is inside the coffin, with pretty much everything else missing or destroyed. Experts continued studying the mummy in hopes of learning more about her lifestyle and any diseases she may have suffered from. And now for a mummy with a gold tongue. But first, I want to say a big thank you to Lexi Dodson and Baker Baker. You guys make my day. If you are new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe to Origins Explained if you haven't already. Number 7. Golden Tongued Mummy Earlier this year, a team of Egyptian and Dominican archaeologists announced the discovery of a 2,000-year-old mummy at Tapo Cyrus Magna, an ancient Egyptian city in modern-day Alexandria that has temples dedicated to the god Osiris and the goddess Isis, who was both his sister and wife. While mummies are being discovered left and right, the strange thing about this one was that this one had a large tongue made of gold. The Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities said in a statement that embalmers may have placed the golden tongue on the mummy so that the deceased individual could speak to the gods in the afterlife. Researchers are unsure why the tongue is made of gold or if maybe the person had an actual speech impediment throughout their life. Led by archaeologist Kathleen Martinez, the team found the mummy among 16 newly discovered burials at the site. 
Included among the other fascinating finds are two mummies who were found buried with scrolls, which experts are currently deciphering to see what they say. The mummy's cartonage, or plaster, bears golden decorations of Osiris. Additionally, the team discovered several remarkably well-preserved statues depicting the deceased, who are pictured in formal stances and attire, and not smiling. The individuals either lived between 304 and 30 BC when the Ptolemies ruled Egypt or after the Roman Empire came into power in 30 BC, following Cleopatra's death. Number 6. Mummified Animals In 2018, archaeologists discovered a trove of mummified animals at the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara, a vast burial ground near what is now Cairo. The cache consists of hundreds of artifacts dating back roughly 2,600 years to Egypt's 26th dynasty, including masks, statues, and the mummified remains of cats, cobras, crocodiles, birds, and two lion cubs, amounting to at least 75 animals. It is incredibly rare to come across intact lion remains in ancient Egypt. In fact, the pair, who died at around eight months old, are the first ever mummified lion cubs ever discovered, and the entire collection of animals is unprecedented, despite Saqqara being a vast burial ground that was used for over 3,000 years. Besides the lion cubs, there were three other mummified wildcats at the site, whose species remain unidentified, and 20 smaller felines. The team who made the discoveries consider a large scarab statue to be one of their most significant finds. It's the biggest artifact of its type ever discovered, according to Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. It was not uncommon for the ancient Egyptians to mummify and bury animals, but the size of this particular collection certainly stands out. They engaged in these practices both because they believed animals were reincarnations of gods and as offerings to the gods. Number 5. Misidentified Mud Mummy Archaeologists recently described the only known ancient Egyptian mummy wrapped in a carapace, or a shell, made of hardened mud. Dating back roughly 3,400 years to 1207 BC, this one-of-a-kind female mummy was damaged after death and was found in the wrong coffin, misidentifying it as a woman named Merua or Maruta. Acquired during the 19th century by an English-Australian politician named Sir Charles Nicholson, he donated it to the University of Sydney in 1860. But the woman's remains are several hundred years older than the coffin it was found in. The coffin dates back to around 1000 BC. See, this is why the University Museum is trying to get organized now. There was a lot of chaos surrounding all these Egyptian mummies and sarcophagi they were getting in the 1800s. When asked why the embalmers may have used mud instead of resin, lead researcher Karen Sawada explained in an interview with Life Science that mud is a more affordable material. In other words, this may have been a way for people with less money to receive a proper burial, leading researchers to think that this embalming technique may have been somewhat common, despite there only being one of these examples ever discovered. As for why the mummy was placed into the wrong coffin, the team thinks that Nicholson was duped by whoever sold him the artifacts. Local dealers likely place an unrelated mummified body in the coffin to sell a more complete set, a well-known practice in the local antiquities trade the researchers wrote in the study. Coffin plus mummy was more valuable. While these findings were only recently published, experts first noticed something odd about the mummy in 1999 while examining a CT scan of it. Upon further examination, they found the sand-like mixture that was used to encase the deceased person. Now, with better technology, another team revisited the specimen in 2017 and discovered the additional strange details, including the woman's damaged knee and leg, which may have happened at the hands of grave robbers and prompted embalmers to repair and rewrap her in the mud carapace. Number 4. Extinct Goose Experts have determined that three geese depicted in the artwork of an ancient Egyptian tomb belonging to Nefermath I and his wife Itet represent an extinct species, offering a rare glimpse of an animal that no longer exists. Dating back some 4,600 years, the painting, a famous piece of artwork called Maidum Geese and nicknamed the Mona Lisa of Egypt, features a real creature, unlike many ancient Egyptian depictions of mythical deities and animals. The fresco, which is now housed at Cairo's Museum of Egyptian Antiquities, was discovered in 1871 at a site in Lower Egypt called Maidum. Archaeologists and other researchers were puzzled about the birds for quite some time, 
until evolutionary biologist Dr. Anthony Romilio recently examined the animals and spotted what he believes is a speckled goose that is not seen in the modern world. Artistic license could account for the difference with modern geese, but artworks from this site have extremely realistic depictions of other birds and mammals, Romilio said in a statement. These other creatures include dogs, cattle, leopards, and antelope, leading Romilio to believe it would make no sense to include fictional geese in the mix. Previously, the birds were thought to be a red-breasted goose species, which are found in Europe, not North Africa, where no such remains have ever been found, and do not exactly match the geese in the painting. From a zoological perspective, the Egyptian artwork is the only known documentation of this distinctively patterned goose, which appears now to be globally extinct, said Romilio. Researchers say that it's unlikely they'll ever know what caused the species' extinction. Number 3. Stacked Coffins Last September, Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities announced the discovery of 13 wooden coffins dating back to 500 BC at the vast Saqqara necropolis, located roughly 20 miles south of modern-day Cairo. The remains are surprisingly well-preserved, pristine, according to scientists, despite being over 2,500 years old. They were in such good condition, some of the colors painted on the coffins were still visible. Archaeologists found the sarcophagi stacked atop one another in a burial shaft, roughly 36 feet underground, and the team believes there may be more still to be found in there. Saqqara served as the necropolis for the ancient Egyptian capital of Memphis for an estimated 3,000 years. Researchers have made many fascinating discoveries at the sprawling site, including the graves of high-ranking nobles and other elite members of society. But the recently discovered coffin's remarkable state of preservation has them perplexed, wondering how the sarcophagi stayed in such good condition for so long, especially since they're made of wood, which usually rots over time, leaving the human remains within exposed to the elements. Plus, they are lucky that grave robbers didn't get there first and smash everything to bits. Regardless of what factors caused the coffins to remain in such great shape, the discovery is extremely exciting due to its promising ability to teach experts new things about ancient Egyptian burial customs. Number 2. Doomsday Prediction The tomb of Kentkaus III, a queen from Egypt's Old Kingdom whose husband, Pharaoh Neferefre, ruled around 4,500 years ago, allegedly contains an ominous doomsday prediction in the form of climate change evidence. The finding, which was announced last November, is helping to fill in some gaps in what Professor Miroslav Barta calls a black patch in the history of the Old Kingdom. Kent Kaus III was laid to rest in a tomb 650 feet away from her husband at a necropolis in Abu Sir, located southwest of Cairo. Until her burial was discovered, she was, for the most part, unknown. Her tomb contains graffiti labeling her as the Queen Mother. Professor Barta is part of a team from the Czech Institute of Egyptology that is working together to examine the chamber's contents, which include pottery, copper, woodwork, animal bones, and more. They plan to radiocarbon date and examine Kent Kaus III's bones in hopes of determining her age at death, any health conditions she suffered from, and possibly even how many children she had. Unfortunately, the queen's skull was found smashed, likely due to grave robbers, making a facial reconstruction extremely difficult, if not entirely impossible. The full investigation of the tomb is projected to take around two years. Speaking with CNN about the time when Kent Kaus lived and died, he said it was a crucial period when the Old Kingdom started to face major critical factors, the rise of democracy, the horrific impact of nepotism, and the role played by interest groups. He added that climate change was also a factor in bringing Egypt's old kingdom to an end, with drought becoming a regular occurrence within 200 years of the Queen Mother's death. The Nile no longer flooded and everything just dried out. Evidence inside the tomb, including artifacts and inscriptions, reportedly points toward climate change becoming increasingly problematic in governing the old kingdom, with reduced harvests affected by the changing weather meaning that less taxes could be collected and therefore less money for the society. This led to the fall of the Old Kingdom Empire as well as those in the Middle East and Western Europe at the time. The team hopes to elaborate on these clues as they delve deeper into their ongoing analysis. Number 1. The Hyksos Origins Ancient Egypt is not often thought of as a multicultural melting pot, despite periods of rulership by different societies. 
But the plain and simple truth is that the region was more diverse than it is often given credit for. Until recently, experts speculated that a mysterious group called the Hyksos, who ruled during the 15th dynasty, invaded and conquered ancient Egypt as outsiders. A study published last year indicates, however, that these people were not foreign intruders after all. Archaeological evidence shows that the Hyksos did indeed come to Egypt from somewhere else, but that they rose to power from within Egyptian society after migrating there some time before. All signs point toward the group having originally come from the Near East, but the dynamics behind their arrival in Egypt and subsequent rise to power are still somewhat of a mystery. Working with colleagues, Chris Stantis of Bournemouth University, UK, collected tooth enamel samples from the remains of 75 individuals at the ancient Hyksos capital of Tel El Daba in the northeast Nile Delta. By comparing the ratios of strontium isotopes from the samples with environmental isotope signatures from Egypt and other places, they learned that most of the individuals buried at Tel El Daba were non-locals who came there from somewhere else, both before and after the Hyksos rose to power and fell from it. These findings indicate that the Hyksos did not all migrate collectively around the same time as part of a unified movement like a group of invaders would. Instead, it appears as though the Hyksos were a multicultural group who eventually came to rule ancient Egypt after gradually integrating into and assimilating with society. Archaeological chemistry, specifically isotopic analysis, shows us first-generation migration during a time of major cultural transformations in ancient Egypt, Stantis explained, adding that rather than the old scholastic theories of invasion, Asian, we see more people, especially women, migrating to Egypt before Hyksos rule, suggesting economic and cultural changes leading to foreign rule rather than violence. While this study is groundbreaking in terms of identifying the Hyksos origins, the team admitted that more research is necessary to determine exactly where these people came from. Thanks for watching! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!